If you're looking for a powerful yet budget-friendly GPU-powered computer for your next robotics or AI project, then the Jetson Nano Oren would be a good option for you. Let's dive in. If you're new to my channel, I have a website at kevinwoodrobotics.com where I have a bunch of resources on robotics and computer vision. So check it out and subscribe to learn more. So here, what we're looking at is the Jetson Nano Oren Super Developer Kit. So this is a super nice computer for your robotics and AI project. It's super small, it can fit in the palm of your hand. And you can see here at number one, we have a fan here. Number two, this is a 40 pin expansion header. This number three here is a power indicator light. Four, this one is a USB-C port for transferring data. Five is an ethernet port. And we also have four USB ports here. Number seven is a display port connector. Eight is for your power. And then nine, we have a nice connection for your cameras. So this is super nice to integrate all sort of electronics, good for prototyping. And here you can see these are some of the specs for the Super. You see that we're using a GPU with the NVIDIA Ampere architecture with 1024 CUDA cores and 32 Tensor cores. The CPU is going to be a 6-core ARM Cortex. And you can see that we have 8 gigabytes here for this one with a 102 gigabytes per second bandwidth. The storage is going to be using a SD card, but it also has some external NVM. The power is going to range from 7 to 25 watt. You could up the wattage to access some of the super capabilities that we'll talk about. So you might be wondering, so we have a Jetson Nano Oren and the Raspberry Pi, which are both very similar in terms of the different things they can interface. So when would you want to choose one over the other? So I would say the main thing that you want to think about is the type of application you plan to run for your project. So for most cases, if you're going to have any sort of AI models that you're going to be running, then the Jetson Nano Oren is probably going to be the better option for you due to the GPU support that it has. The GPU is going to allow a lot of the different things you want to run to actually run at the speed that you want. Whereas if you try to use something like the Pi, you're probably going to mostly rely on the CPU, which is going to be a lot slower. So if you're going to do basic projects that don't involve AI, a Raspberry Pi is probably going to be good enough for you. It could probably handle like basic uh, computer vision type of applications where it uses very little AI. But thinking about where we're headed now, a lot of times your project is probably going to involve a lot of AI type of applications. So that's why I think the Jetson Nano Oren is going to future-proof you for any sort of development that you plan to do in the future. So the specific type of AI models where the Jetson Nano Oren really shines is running these type of AI models, like LLMs, large language models. We have VLMs, vision language models, as well as VIT, which are vision transformers. It also has some special Jetpack features that really make the Jetson Nano Oren stand out. They have TensorRT, which is optimized real-time inference for your AI models. We have the DLA, which is the designated hardware for deep learning tasks. We also have the CUDA DNN, which has high performance for deep learning primitives. And we have CUDA, which is a general purpose GPU code acceleration. So all of these features is what makes the Jetson Nano Oren ideal for all sorts of AI applications. Another reason why I think the Jetson Nano Oren is really nice is that it has a lot of support for ROS. In fact, they came out with their own thing called the Isaac ROS. So what's nice about Isaac Ross is that a lot of their packages are GPU accelerated. So you can see that they offer a lot of different things, which we'll briefly cover in a little bit. Uh, but the main thing you want to know is that ROS is a nice thing that allows you to quickly prototype robotics projects. So if you're new to ROS and want to learn more about it, I have a playlist on my channel that starts from the basics and takes you to advanced concepts for ROS2 control and simulation with Gazebo. So go ahead and check it out so you can get ready to learn Isaac ROS. Isaac Ross has a bunch of GPU accelerated packages that lets you do different things for your robotics and AI projects. So one of them is the pose estimation. This gives you the 3D position and orientation of various objects using a camera. We also have the Ross image segmentation. This allows you to segment parts of the object. In this case, we have segmentation for the outline of the people. 
we also have Isaac Ross DNN Stereo Depth. This gives you a depth map. So this is good for sensing any sort of 3D information. This specific one is using stereo. So it means there's two cameras. We also have the Isaac Ross Q Motion. This helps you do any sort of accelerated arm motion planning and control. So things like pick and place or moving with uh, different obstacles in the way. This is perfect for that. It also offers Isaac Ross Visual Slam. So this is good for any sort of localization. If you have, for example, a mobile robot trying to explore an environment, this can help you do any sort of mapping and localization. We also have the Isaac Ross NV blocks. So this is good for 3D scene reconstruction and mapping. Also good for typically mobile robots or autonomous vehicles. We have the Isaac Ross object detection. So this, this is using the DetectNet to detect people. And we also have the Isaac Ross April tag. So this is good for also detection and post estimation of objects using markers. So what's nice is that Isaac Ross has an easy integration with Isaac Sim. So Isaac Sim is a simulation environment that's built off of the Omniverse. So a lot of times you may want to simulate your robot before you deploy it in real life. So this is a very good add-on that you can use to your project. So what exactly are the differences between the original Jetson Aura Nano and the new Jetson Aura Nano, which they call the Super? So in fact, they actually use the same hardware. So where are we seeing the performance increase from? In fact, they only do this through software. You get a 1.7 times performance increase by using the Jetpack 6.1. So this is what takes you from the original to the Super. And in this specific case, we're talking about the 8 gigabyte version. So you can see these are some of the spec comparisons. On the left is the original, and on the right is the Super. So you can see that we're going from 635 megahertz to 1020 megahertz. We also go from 40 tops to 67 tops, and 20 tops to 33 tops with a dense. And then we have 10 to 17 T flops. So here you can see that we're going from 1.5 gigahertz to 1.7 gigahertz and 68 gigabits per second to 102 gigabits per second. And now instead of only supporting 7 and 15 watt applications, we can go up to 25 watts. And again, all of this is through a software upgrade. Pretty amazing. So here you can see some performance benchmarks between the original and the Super Jetson Nano Orin. This one is for the LLM. So for example, this first two here is showing the performance increase for the Llama. We have a 1.37 and 1.55. And these are some other ones that they tested. We also have the VLM benchmark. Again, you can see a bunch of increase ranging from like the lowest 1.36 with the highest up to two times. And same here, we have a VIT benchmark. You can see that some of the ranges are from like 1.43 up to almost 1.7 times improvement. So there's a bunch of Jetson Orin products and you might be wondering which one to get. So here I will review some of the differences between their products. So these boards right here are not the development kit. They're just the boards themselves. But you can see that the AGX Orin series, they can go up to 275 tops with a 15 to 60 watts. And prices start around $900. The Jetson Orin NX series, it can go up to 100 tops and it's between 10 and 25 watts. And starting price for these are $399. And we have the Jetson Orin Nano series. These can go up to 40 tops, ranges from 7 to 15 watts, and starts from $199. So all of these, they also come with a developer kit, which is pretty much a board inside a kit that makes it easier to interface and work with. So these two developer kits may be a good option for you if you're just starting off. So here you can see this is some comparisons between the Orin Nano 4GB, the 8GB, and as well as the NX series, which also have the 8GB and 16GB. So it really comes down to the peak AI performance. So you want to look at the tops and see how much tops you need for the different AI models you plan to run. You can also consider the GPU that they have, so how many cores you need, right? Really, the cores, there's not a huge difference because it ranges from 512 to 1024. So if you get like this middle range one, you kind of get the best of both worlds because you get like a middle ground tops here with a pretty high uh, CUDA core count, which might be pretty good for your application. 
So here you can see they have a few more product lines. So they have the AGX Xavier series as well as the Xavier NX series. So these right here go up to 32 tops and this one is 21 tops. These start at around 900 and these start around 400. And lastly, we have the Jetson TX2 series. These are 1.3 T-flops and the range is from 7.5 to 15 watts. These start around 149. And we have the Jetson Nano here, which is 0.5 T-flops for five to 10 watts. These start around $99. So depending on your budget and the different type of performance, you could choose the one that's right for you. But I would say if you're just going to start, a good option for you is to choose the Jetson Nano Oren developer kit, the super one, because it's already integrated in a kit. So you don't have to worry about integrating these boards individually. And in terms of the performance and price is a pretty good option. Okay. So if you found this video helpful, give a like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.